The longbow in Resident Evil 5 is an exclusive weapon to Sheva. You can unlock this weapon only after fully upgrading the S75 bolt action rifle, which is the first sniper rifle you encounter in the game. Once it is fully upgraded, the option to purchase a longbow is unlocked and it will cost you 50,000 gold. You cannot upgrade this weapon in the infinite ammunition guns by default. The longbow does 1500 damage per hit, which makes it a powerful weapon. However, there is some drawback. Firstly, there is no aiming reticle when using this weapon, unless you play with a mouse and keyboard, so you will have to get a feel for using this weapon. And secondly, there is a slight arrow drop, so you will have to account for that as well. Once those obstacles are out of the way, you will find that the longbow is mostly one-shot kill against a regular Magini. This gameplay is on professional mode, so it would definitely be a one-shot kill in lower difficulties. After playing through the game on professional using this weapon, I find that it's really only useful against smaller groups of Magini, and it does well against the majority of sub-bosses. However, it lacks greatly against the majority of the bosses in the games, so I would advise you to use a more conventional weapon. First, let's look at the sub-bosses this bow is useful against. It is pretty useful against the Executioner. While there are other weapons that would work a lot better, the bow still isn't a bad choice if you are low on ammunition for your Magnum. He's pretty easy to stun, but don't get too close as usual. Next is the Chainsaw Magini. If you are going to use this weapon against him, I'd recommend to throw a flash to slow him down and then let it loose on him. Once he's in a second phase, it takes one shot to finish him off. The bow isn't bad against the giant Magini, but as with the Executioner, there are better weapons to use against him. Luckily, he is easy to stun, so you can keep a safe distance to take him out easily enough. The bow can deal with Reapers really well if you are accurate enough to hit them in their weak spots. It should only take a few arrows to kill them. Now for the less ideal sub-bosses to use this weapon against. First are the Lickers. It does decent enough damage to them one-on-one, -on -one, but when they are gripped up, using a bow is suicide. And finally, we have the Gatling Gun Magini. This dude just has a lot of health and is hard to stun at times, so you will be taking some shots from him if you don't take cover get out of the way and on professional mode, that could be a fatal mistake. Now on to the main bosses in the game. Unfortunately, this weapon doesn't do good against the majority of them, but let's start with the bosses it fares well against. First is Pop Reaver. The best way to take him out quickly is by downing him with a mine and to shoot his weak spot. It doesn't take too many hits to kill him and it may take two cycles to get enough damage in to kill him. The next boss is Excella. I was actually surprised that the bow does well against Excella. The bow does about half the damage of the weakest magnum, but it still hits hard on the boss. The tentacles are huge targets and easy to hit, while the main weak spot is like shooting fish in a barrel. It may take 3 cycles to finally kill it, on professional. And lastly, we have Wesker. What makes this boss so easy to kill is whenever you play as Sheva, Chris will actually halt Wesker from moving and expose his weak spot when he has taken enough damage. I missed a lot of shots on the first cycle, but I still killed him on the second cycle, making this one of the quickest bosses to kill with the bow. Once the bosses that the bow is useless against, we have Uroboros. This is the first boss in the entire game and is a stubborn bitch to kill with longbow only. You'll have to use the fire around the arena or use some incendiary grenades to make this boss quicker. Next is Irving. I hate this boss. The tentacles are hard to hit with the bow due to the arrow drop, but they do break off in a few shots, but Irving himself takes forever to kill when you only use this weapon. Irving squirms around the entire time and with the inaccuracies of the bow, it makes it him difficult. Just don't bother using this weapon against him. Another difficult boss is U8. This creature is difficult for the same reason Irving is. It just moves around too much to get some steady shots. Once you crack open his skull and lay out on his exposed weak spot, it won't take a too awful long time to kill. It's just tedious. And finally, we have Uroboros Makono. To save yourself the headache and do not use the bow against this monster. My final thoughts on the weapons are as follows. It is cool to use in the earlier chapters of the game, but once you progress, the usefulness of the bow dwindles. It is much more useful than the Gatling gun, but I still find it more of a novelty weapon. It is a good alternate to a Magnum if you haven't unlocked infinite ammo for any of them yet. And if you play as Chris, equip Sheva with the bow and the AI is absolutely lethal with it. That wraps up the weapon showcase for the longbow. If you liked the video, please subscribe as I will be continuing making weapon showcases like this for Resident Evil 5, eventually covering all of the weapons. Check the description for links to everything involving Resident Evil 5 and my weapon showcases for Resident Evil 4. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.